Well, it is so lovely to meet you. Hi, my name is uh, Savannah. Uh, I'm 23. I'm a reporter here at the Richmond Times Dispatch. And today I just wanted to kind of do a quick update story on you, everything that's been going on for you since we last did the story on you a few years ago. Um, and I just had a couple questions about just track in general and kind of what's been going on recently with you. Okay, sounds good. It's nice to meet you too. Amazing. I love to hear it. So first, uh, just to some people who might not know you, just if you could kind of introduce yourself, what your name is and what events you run. Okay, my name is Britton Wilson. I am a 400 and 400 meter hurdler. Um, I haven't ran the hurdles in a while, but still a 400 meter hurdler, <laughs> um, but mainly the 400 um, and I'm sponsored by Adidas. Um, and yeah, that's the general gist. <laughs> Amazing. And so I guess I'll just start, we'll just jump right in with college. Uh, you, you start at Tennessee, you transfer to Arkansas. What was the experience like at Arkansas? Arkansas was a great experience um, being a transfer and coming in from an older, different environment and transferring in there. Um, it was amazing. I had a really great support system. The athletic trainers were um, very diligent and they like found a lot of things regarding my health that I didn't even know I had. So everyone was very like, um, they paid close attention to, to the athletes and we're trying to make sure that we were okay so we could be able to compete at our best. So that was the biggest change I had was just feeling super supported. Um, and then obviously coach Johnson is a great coach. So just coming to that environment and getting to know him and getting to know the girls was a great change for me. Amazing. What, what maybe were some of your favorite memories of Arkansas? Um, probably my first SEC championship as a team when we won the team title. Um, and I had never experienced like a team win before. So that was a super exciting memory. And then obviously, um, indoor nationals when I won and broke the American record, that was super exciting. That's probably one of my favorite college memories. Talk to me about when you broke that American record, just what was going through your head, like maybe when it happened, maybe when you saw that you kind of, you're like, oh my gosh, I broke the record. <laughs> yeah, I well, I wasn't even thinking about the record. I was thinking about the time because <laughs> when I saw 49 on the clock, I was like shocked. I didn't know I would, I ran that fast. Um, and then I was like, oh, that is the American record. So I was just um, a lot of positive emotions going through. I had looked up and saw my family in the stands and my mom was just like bawling tears. So that's like the greatest like the one picture I have of that memory is just like looking up and seeing my mom <laughs> sobbing but um it was a great memory my dad was there my best friend Allison was there so I have such positive memories from that meet and I think the biggest like takeaway from it was just like I went into the meet not really expecting to win um because I had just came off of COVID and I was like mm -hmm. I wasn't really competing that indoor season. So I was just kind of like going out there, just to try my best. And then I won. So <laughs> I wasn't expecting the win and I was definitely not expecting the American record. Mm -hmm. What were some ups and downs uh, for you in college, uh, particularly Arkansas? But I know like obviously at Tennessee, you transferred to Arkansas. So what maybe were some up and downs total of your college career? Um, I think the up and downs would can definitely be summarized by like my health journey. Mm -hmm. Um, mentally and physically, I had a lot of up and downs. Um, and then I obviously had been dealing with the shin injury, like from the beginning of college. So, or well, beginning of when I started running better at Arkansas, but I think that would be the main summary was just trying to figure out and balance my health. And then also being a student athlete isn't really easy in general. So <laughs> balancing like school and social life and family life and athletics, like it was all a big adjustment, especially how intense it was at Arkansas versus Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, they were a little more lax at Tennessee. And then Arkansas came and it was just like super structured. They had us going to meetings. We had to meet with our coach, meet with the academic advisor. Like everything was very structured. So I think that was a big change too, like having to balance all that and then go to classes and all yeah. that. So I think the ups and downs definitely came with balancing student athlete life and athlete life and then just managing my health. Was the structure something you kind of enjoyed? Yes, I need it. <laughs> I definitely am a structure person. And I didn't know that until I came to Arkansas. Now I'm like super type A. Like I write everything down. I write to-do lists everywhere. I have a planner. I have like three different planners mm -hmm. now. Like <laughs> I didn't know that I was that kind of person until I came to Arkansas. And it's, I don't really get things done unless I have structure. So 
coming to Arkansas definitely helped me find that out because I wasn't really doing it before. So mm -hmm. I definitely needed the structure for sure. And, you know, going from Arkansas into your professional career, you know, I feel like that structure has just made it even more beneficial to have that structure oh, going yeah. into that professional career. Definitely, definitely. I remember I used to like tell my mom I wanted to go pro after one year of college, which <laughs> obviously wasn't in my cards. But um, when I did go pro, I like look back on it now and I'm just like I needed all of what I had at Arkansas to be able to be a pro athlete because I didn't really I wasn't really responsible yeah. to put it simply like I wasn't really holding myself accountable like I was a good athlete and I was a good student but I could have been a better athlete and a better student yeah. and then I came to Arkansas and I had like all this stuff laid out for me I was being a lot more responsible and a lot more accountable which definitely taught me how to be a professional because now we have to do everything on our own like we have to make our own schedule we have to get into these meets with our agent we have to schedule everything and go to practice and go to rehab and training and all this so I'm able to do it now, but I don't think I would have been able to do it if I hadn't learned how to become a structured, responsible athlete. And you kind of look now looking back on your college experience, was that maybe like one of the most beneficial parts of your college experience? Oh, definitely. For sure. I, I think my mindset changed a lot coming into Arkansas. Um, my first year, it was kind of just like managing and balancing, figuring things out. And then my second year, I was very um determined and focused and I learned how to like change my mindset instead of like doubting and being scared I was just always telling myself like positive affirmations and just being really confident on the track which translated into everyday life and I think I needed that like transition year to be able to become that athlete definitely now looking at your pro life uh walk me through maybe what a day in your life looks like as a pro athlete now oh uh now or like yeah. the beginning of pro because it's different right now the injury mm -hmm. <laughs> I would before, say, maybe go before the injury and then we'll get into the injury okay <laughs> um so before um being a pro is very much a nine to five job and <laughs> sorry five to nine um yeah. and I feel like people don't really think that it's like that because it's kind of just like oh like you get to do what you love as a career, which is true, but it is very much a job. Um, I get up pretty much at like 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Um, and get breakfast and stuff ready, which was a whole nother thing I had learned, which is how important nutrition is. So now I have to get up early and prioritize it because we have weights at 7 a.m. So I have to get up extra early to be able to eat, go to weights, and then eat again, go to practice, eat again, go to rehab, and then after that, we do like stretching and rolling out and all the other just like post-practice stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just like weights, training, rehab, recovery, do it again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty much like it is a very nice schedule because it's pretty much the same. But um, it was very I needed it to be like that so I would be able to stay responsible. And then I had the cross training come in with the injury. And so I'd be swimming and biking. And we kind of just like added that within my schedule. So sometimes I'd be swimming in the morning and then go to weights and then bike and so forth. So right. it's pretty much a very, very structured day, mm -hmm. very much a five to nine job. <laughs> like we work all day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, maybe what are some of the biggest differences for you on the track between um, college and pro now? You know, like obviously off the track, you've talked about how you have to be a lot more like independent and individual, but maybe on the track, have you noticed really any major glaring differences between the college and the pro level? Um. Yes, I think the major difference is how much everything is set up for us in college. Yeah. Like everything is basically handed to you which sounds kind of negative but it's not um but it pretty much is everything is handed to you like we have um when we go to track meets you pretty much just have to pack your bag and show up right. um, and then now as a professional I have to pack my bag I have to get my flight I have to be the one to take myself to the airport I have to check into my flight like all that stuff I have to check into my hotel all that stuff I had never done before we literally just packed a bag got on the bus and showed up to the track meet and then like they had people that handled everything else for us um, and then also with like finances, taxes, all this stuff I never had to do before. So I'm learning it now as professional, but that's the biggest thing. And like, I know a few girls that were on the college team this year that are going to become professional coming this fall. And I've like sat them down and told them, I was just like, 
It is definitely the dream and like being a professional athlete is super exciting, but like take a minute and realize yeah. what you're about to do because <laughs> it's not just all fun and games. And, and people told me that too when I was in college, but I didn't listen to them. And then <laughs> I became pro and I was like, okay, they were right. Like this is not as sunshine and rainbows as it seems like um, it's actually a job. So that was definitely the biggest thing is just like, there's so many things that you don't pay attention to when you're in college and then you become pro and you like have to pay attention to them. Right, right, right. It's just like you didn't even think about flights or hotels when you were in college. And now it's like, OK, wait, I have to think about that now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we literally just showed up to track meets, like put on, make sure we had our uniform and our shoes and showed up to the meet. <laughs> awesome. And so when did you graduate Arkansas? So I graduated um, this spring, actually, mm -hmm. but I went pro the summer before that. So okay. I was still my whole first year professional. I was still in school. Mm -hmm. which was actually a really nice transition because it still kind of felt like I was a student athlete yeah. and it wasn't just like two big changes. So um, I finished school all the way up until this, was it May? May? Yeah. Um, yeah. I was, I'm looking at my mom. She's right there. <laughs> um, all the way up to this May and then I graduated. So it was definitely kind of funny because like I would go to these track meets like when I went I competed in China mm -hmm. and I was like oh my gosh wait I gotta finish this paper and like there were other pros and they were like what what paper like what do you mean <laughs> they're like why are you writing a paper and I was like oh I'm still in school <laughs> so that's funny. it was oh, someone's at my door sorry <laughs> um but yeah so it was definitely a transition but it was a good one mm -hmm. so I just finished this spring Amazing. And so that's kind of interesting too, how you're like, you still were a student athlete per se. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what I thought. I was like, technically, I'm still <laughs> an athlete. But I called myself an athlete student because at that point, athlete came first. <laughs> right. Because I was like, that's my job. <laughs> you, you, knew, you knew student athlete, you knew student, you knew athlete. It was a whole, you knew mm -hmm. all the combinations. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And then I guess since you since becoming pro you know maybe what are some major milestones you've hit and maybe what were some really fun things you've gotten to do since you became pro yeah um I feel like the milestones I hit were not the milestones I was hoping to hit in my first pro year but I've learned to really give myself grace and like calm down about it because of the injury and not like just be sad and beat myself yeah. up nobody really knew what I was going through and I was injured pretty much the entire pro year mm -hmm. um it just was, it was healing and it was better, but then it slowly got worse. So it was kind of like, we weren't expecting it to get worse. And for me to have that injury. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey. Sorry, one second. I'll be you're, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> hey, calm down. sorry. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> um, what, what were you talking about? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just kind of how you were in your first year pro milestones. You kind of were going to work and yes. stuff you're working through. <laughs> yeah. So I um, had these huge milestones and like mm -hmm. goals. I have like a whole vision board, which I need to redo and take down because it has old goals on it. But mm -hmm. um, I had everything planned out that for the year and that I wanted to have. But mm -hmm. And we had the injury. And so I kind of learned to just be proud of like the little small goals, which was yeah. like, oh, I won my first professional race. Oh, I ran 50 point. Like it was kind of like that. Like I wasn't running personal best or breaking records, but it was still a milestone I was hitting because of what I was going through. Mm -hmm. And so it did make it a little difficult because like I would see on social media, people would be like, oh, Britton Wilson's not running as fast as last year. But again, like nobody knew how much pain I was in. So yeah. I learned and like with the support of my family and my coaches, I learned to just be proud of the little tiny goals. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of weird for me to be like, oh, I didn't hit any milestones mm -hmm. because I technically did. Yeah. They just weren't the milestones that I was hoping to hit. So it's definitely a, a matter of just like giving myself grace in that mm -hmm. stance. So talk to me a little bit about the injury. Um, what kind of happened and kind of what was the timeline of what happened? Yeah, so it's basically the same injury I had um, my first year at Arkansas. So sorry, was it my first year? 
Um, well, my first year, I kind of, I just had shin splints. And mm-hmm. then my second year is when it turned from shin splints into the stress fracture, but it was a very low grade stress fracture. And then I kept competing and obviously I was running really well. So I was happy to be competing, right. um, but it got worse and worse and worse. And we didn't really notice until I was in so much pain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got an MRI and it was a grade four stress fracture. So it was nearly broken. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I was still kind of running on it. I was basically running on a broken leg for like months. But (laughs) we um, took some time off at the end of that season around August. And then I came back kind of in January, Mm February-ish, which we thought was enough time, but it actually was not really healing as fast as we hoped. Um, And again, we didn't really know. I was just kind of like, oh, it hurts a little bit, but I can run. And it turns out that the injury was basically still there. Um, so every time I was running at practice and running at these meets, it was getting worse again. Um, so we finally got another MRI this coming spring or this past spring, and it was a grade three. So it's a little bit better, but it's still a pretty bad fracture. Um, so that was when we ultimately decided to shut my season down just because I was in pain. I couldn't walk at that point. I was in pain doing like everyday things. So, um, my agents and my coach kind of all came together and, collectively made the decision to just shut it down mm-hmm. and so you can say no if you need to was it in your leg yes yeah it's okay. in my um tibia in my shin tibia. all right cool just want to make sure you get that right <laughs> <laughs> perfect perfect and I know that has to be a lot for you to you know continue to train and keep trying to push through it and then for it to ultimately kind of not pan out uh you know how have you but kind of been battling that physically and mentally on that front Yeah, it was definitely really difficult. Um, I feel like I would say like last year was like one of the hardest times of my life with dealing with the injury, but then I came this year and it topped it. (laughs) I was like, this year was actually the hardest time of my life. (laughs) So it was pretty hard because I I really didn't know how to handle it because I wanted to run so badly with this being the Olympic year. Um, And so I kind of was just trying to pretend that I wasn't in that much pain, Mm -hmm. but I was. And like, I got to the point where like, I couldn't even go through a practice without ending in tears. And Mm -hmm. I think my coach started to pick up on it. And just like, my coach's wife was picking up on it. She would like, be like, come on, let's go to the bathroom and just like calm me down. Cause I was just having these like little mental breakdowns every day. And it was just, I wasn't really handling it well because I was so overwhelmed. Right. Um, so it took me a while to finally get to the point where I was able to handle it better, which was more, more like now that I'm kind of calming back down and coming back to myself and just like, this is for a reason, like you're sitting out for a reason. Um, but in the middle of it, it was really hard. And I was just kind of ignoring it and trying to run. I wanted to run so badly. Obviously everyone who, is an athlete wants to become an Olympian one day. So that was all that was playing in my mind was just like, this is the Olympic year. You're going to be okay. You can do it. Um, but it just got too bad, too much to handle. And we didn't really plan for that. So it was sad and heartbreaking. Yeah. And I was going to ask, you know, like with it being an Olympic year, you know, at 23, just, you know, how does that kind of like affect maybe how your career goes forward? You know, what are maybe some next steps for you once you kind of work through and get better from this injury? Yeah, so the next steps are basically going to just be obviously healing right now. And then next year, I am hoping to go to world indoors Mm -hmm. and obviously outdoor worlds, but we might just halt on indoor depending on if the injury is healing well or not. Um, So if it heals pretty decent in the fall, then we'll probably strive for world indoors. Mm -hmm. Um, But ultimately, there's not going to be another Olympics until 2028. So. It'll just be world championships and hopefully break some records in there. Mm -hmm. Somewhere sprinkled in between, break some records. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But um, that's the big goal is just get healthy right now. And then from there, we'll kind of plan. I definitely do have my eyes set on world championships this summer or this next Mm -hmm. summer. So if I'm all healed up, we'll go for that. But um, Mm -hmm. I think the year after that is a off year. So there's no world championships, Mm -hmm. which will be nice to train through and just kind of do like some small meets and stuff. And then we'll get ready for 2028. I literally am already about to like start hanging up 2028 posters Uh all over my house. So that is, it was definitely heartbreaking to not be able to come to this Olympics, but Mm -hmm. I am excited to get the chance for the next one. And I was going to ask a little bit about the Olympics, you know, like growing up as a kid, that's the dream, right? The dream is to get to the Olympics and get to wear Team USA on your shirt, right? 
Yeah, I wanted to be an Olympian in gymnastics when I was very little, <laughs> but obviously that changed when I started doing <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I would say it all the time, like, I'm going to become an Olympian, I'm going to become an Olympian. And so I am still trying, I'm trying to like, rewire my brain to like, not say, oh, I'm not an Olympian this year, and yeah. say, I'm going to become an Olympian. So I think it's, well, I know it's going to happen in 2028. It's just not happening right now. So it's heartbreaking. And it's sad, but because it is like my dream, but I know it's going to come in the next Olympics. And maybe what's it like to have like kids like now, you know, this day and age kind of looking at you as you guys, as you continue to grow and get better and aim for the Olympics is like, you know, when you were a kid, you would be obviously you watched gymnastics, you watched track and you're like, oh my gosh, there's athletes. They're just amazing at what they can do. And what's maybe it kind of like to kind of have the flip the script reverse a little bit and you kind yeah. of get to be a role model for some of these future athletes. Oh yeah. It's amazing. Hey, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry, one second. You're good, you're good. Oh, okay. Hey, no. All these holes. You're so good. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. You're good, you're good. Um, I got a new puppy, so Aww. a little crazy right now. Right. <laughs> um, but the question was the question was about what it's kind of like to be a role model after maybe growing oh, yes. up watching all these kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's honestly like incredible. It feels so fulfilling, and like even with the injury, and just like I haven't been on social media in like two, three weeks ish mm -hmm. um, since. I called out of the Olympics. I just kind of like took a break and my coach wanted me to take a break too. So we just got off social media, but I came back on just recently and I just have like all these messages and all these people just like still supporting me and just like really excited for me to come back. And every time I get a message, I, I try to respond to them all because it's just like, it makes me feel so supported and loved and special. Um, but I also love that I can be that for people. And like, I remember when I was young and I would like, try to get Allison Felix attention or like <laughs> Queen Harrison, I'd be like, hi, my name's Brittany Wilson. And then like they wouldn't respond. I'd be so sad. So I always try to like respond to them because I want to be obviously that role model for people, but I also want them to feel like they can see me as a person and not just like some amazing athlete. Like I want them to see me as just them too. Like I was a kid once I was a person or I am a person. <laughs> I, was, I was a non-athlete person <laughs> at one point. So that's like my my biggest thing is just I want to build a community and build a like relationship with the people that consider themselves fans of me. So I I love it and I get so excited when people send me all these messages and I just feel so loved by them. So I want them to feel loved by me too. You talked about social media. What's it like to have social media as a professional athlete? Because obviously there's so much being said online these days. You know, yeah. how do you kind of navigate that platform as a whole? Um, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> People have so much to say all the time, but right. it is fulfilling because people have very nice things to say and people are very supportive a lot of people are more supportive than they are hateful at least that's what I've experienced um but I have experienced the bad side of people just being mean and rude and opinionated but ultimately that comes with social media and the internet so I kind of have just this year learned to not be affected by it mm -hmm. it did affect me in the past but this year was the first year that I really just like took the time to be like, okay, these people literally don't know anything. Like, right. it hit me. Um, I think it was actually, I went to Texas Relays and I ran my very first race after coming back from the first injury and people were so mean on social media. It was like Twitter, they were so mean. And I was like telling my mom, I was reading the comments and I was like crying and I was upset. And then it hit me like, I was like, these people don't know that my leg is fractured. I was like, nobody knows what I'm going through. <laughs> And that was like the light bulb moment in my head. I was like, nobody knows what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in me being upset at them saying like little mean things or whatever, because you never know. And that's like why I try to be kind to people, because you never know what anyone else is going through. Mm -hmm. So now I've done so much better with it. Like if I see something hateful, it, it kind of 
gets to me a little, but then I just shake it off and just say, okay, whatever. They don't know what they're talking about. So I found a healthy balance with it, but social media is kind of part of the job. It actually is part of the job and we can make money on social media as well. So it's like branding and commercial opportunities. So it's definitely important to have as a professional athlete, but it's important to be able to take those breaks and like have a healthy balance with it. Right. And I guess my last question today is you mentioned your vision board, you know, what are some types of things you like to put on your vision board and kind of help you see and kind of keep your head on straight to kind of see what's in the future? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, My vision board is, oh my gosh, sorry. I just realized <laughs> yes, I have a little puppy on the vision board and I just got my puppy yesterday. <laughs> that's that so is so cute. good. That's so cute. <laughs> um, yeah, that just made me super happy. <laughs> but I pretty much... um. This year I had Paris 2024, like mm-hmm. right there in the center. Yeah. And then I had like all the other stuff around it. Those are like affirmations. And then um, this is just like a Diamond League logo because I wanted to compete in the Diamond League, which mm-hmm. I did. I went to China. Um, and then just some more like overflowing with energy and joy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then this one is money. <laughs> Always got some money on <laughs> hey, there. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then I used to have like my marks that I wanted to hit on the track mm-hmm. um, up there um, and I would take them down whenever I ran it um, and then this one was me on the podium at my first world championship so mm-hmm. kind of just like manifesting to be back on the podium and, yeah. Um, yeah just like positive affirmations and things I want to accomplish I'm gonna start to redo it I want to put 2028 in the center mm-hmm. so that that's like the ultimate goal yeah and then have like sometimes I want to hit scattered around there and yeah Hopefully more little funny things. I used to have a Tesla on my vision board and then I got a Tesla. So it was kind of like every time something happens, I take it off. So it's kind of yeah. cool. a little puppy. So Aww. yeah, it's so, so cool. Cute. That's so cute. Well, <laughs> I appreciate you taking your time so much for chatting with me today. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, those are great questions. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um... <laughs> my mom wants to say hi. <laughs> Hi, Savannah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thanks for your text. <laughs> of course. Of course. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, it was so nice to meet you. You too. It was so nice talking with you today. Um, I'll let you guys know when the story comes out. I'll send you a link to it. Um, but again, I appreciate it. Please let me know if you have any questions or any concerns. Just You, know, you have my number, so we'll just reach out whenever, all right? I will. Thank you so much. Yeah, you too. Have a great rest of your day, okay? <laughs> you, bye. Bye.